What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. So it's really cold out, so I've got my heater going right now because I'm too cold to work in the garage and feel like actually having some heat, even though it costs way too much money to actually run that thing and it's super inefficient. But anyway, I'm going to be digging out the transmission somewhere out of this pile of mess over here. And we're gonna be throwing in the car today, uh, as long with drive shaft, whatnot, a um, bunch of little stuff here and there that I gotta throw in, start throwing the harness back in, uh, the heater core, blower motor, all that kind of stuff uh, into the interior. Uh, and then I'm gonna work on wiring after that, but I think I'm gonna put that in a separate video uh, just cause uh, I kinda wanna go into specifics on like wiring up the kill switch and stuff like that that other people might be interested in just seeing that. So, without further ado, I'll stop talking and start digging into this pile of mess behind me. Transmission's all bolted up and everything, and so when I saw this, I was like, holy crap, what did I do wrong? It's been so long since I've seen a Subaru with the transmission in without an engine, um, that I'm like, that that can't be right. I mean, that can't be sitting that far forward. Even though, like, pretty much the only cars that I've ever worked on are Subarus and Volkswagens, um, and Datsuns, but mostly Subarus. <laughs> and still, after it being so long without seeing a transmission in here, I was like, that can't be right. That can't be where the transmission sits. And then I'm like, oh yeah, that's exactly where it sits. I actually Googled a picture though to see. And yeah, that's where it goes. It's pretty bad when it's been that long and uh, I had no idea. But anyway, all of it's bolted up and whatnot. It was a pain in the butt like normal. Uh, definitely be easier with like a transmission jack for sure. Uh, or just a lift and a transmission jack. I still gotta throw the drive shaft on. So I'll do that next. Um, then once I do the drive shaft, uh, I'm not going to throw the axles on yet. I could throw on the passenger side axle, but I got to pull the driver's side axle because I need to pull this boot off and replace it. Uh, as you can see, it's quite torn and nasty. There's even some tape in there right now too. Uh, that's good. But yeah, slowly coming together. It took way too long, just like everything. And yeah, so drive shaft in. And then I'll probably just hold off on both the axles. Drive shaft in, shifters in, all bolted up and whatnot. Um, and I'm not sure I'm a fan of where the hydro is now. So it might interfere with the shifter if you look at it. And it's kind of like a weird cluster going on with the e-brake and all that. It's not really a big deal being close to the handbrake or the e-brake. Because that's just here literally just for parking and nothing else. But I can adjust this because I did slot the holes when I made it. Um, so I have a decent amount of adjustability with that, so I might still be able to use it Hopefully I can because I don't want to like redo all that and then have to weld more nuts to the bottom ah, Oh, well, uh, we'll figure that out in the future uh, But I'm gonna grab the engine harness bay or the engine bay harness um, Start routing it back put the fuse box back in route it through the hole whatnot and then probably start on the main harness as well and try to get the rear harness in which that's there's not much going to the back it's literally just like tail lights and stuff like that so that's not a big harness anymore and then 
Yeah, once I get all that, I'll probably start putting the dash components back in. So like, or at least the heater core and then the blower box and whatnot. But that'll be a while. I'm probably not gonna get much more done today because it's already like four. Um, and I'm really moving slow and not feeling like doing anything. Wires everywhere. I think I've got like a thousand zip ties to try to organize all these things. Um, so I can cut out some of this stuff. This is all like an added security system that the guy had previously. That's why this is all like jumbled up and poorly spliced together. Um, so I can get rid of a lot of this stuff once I actually figure out everything that I need. Uh, Cause I don't feel like pulling up the wiring diagram and actually checking. Cause that's just too much of a pain. Um, I'm not going to be like trimming all of the wires out that I don't need. That is a huge pain and I don't have enough time to do that. Uh, it's definitely a good way to save like five pounds though if you want to cut out all the ne unneeded wires and whatnot. But I'm not going to bother because I need a lot of them. Um, yeah, just going to start routing these rear ones nicely back to the back. Uh, probably follow the tube kind of like the same thing I did over here with the fuel lines. Just zip tie it to the tube. Um, and then lead them to the back. I'll probably throw the tail lights in too, uh, and the headlights so I can route these to the headlights. Um, yeah, just a lot of slow, meticulous stuff, trying to find all the places where the wiring goes. Here's some proof that uh, zip ties can fix anything. So this is the uh, heater controls to like change the directions of like whether you want fresh air or recirculated air type of thing. So this broke, glue didn't work, zip ties work perfect. <laughs> that's a that's a perfect fix right there. So I've got most of the wiring that I can actually tuck right now done. Um, obviously there's a lot that's undone like this. This is all going to the center console. I don't know what I need yet and I can trim. Uh, there's a lot of useless stuff in here. Um, this is also like the gauge cluster wiring and whatnot, but all this is good. One issue that I have, can't find my fuse box. Um, so the, the actual inside interior fuse box or whatever goes right here and that's where all those plugs go so yeah I don't know where it is uh, I contacted the guy that I sold all the stuff to and he said he doesn't remember me giving him an extra one uh, he has an extra one though for Forrester which they're all the same for like every year pretty much uh, the harnesses are different but like the fuse box didn't change until like 04 or 05 for a lot of years so I can also go to the junkyard and pick one up too but uh, I'm gonna keep looking around because I'm pretty sure I pulled it off the harness before I gave it to him and I just, I have it in my pile of crap somewhere. This is why 
Having good organizational skills while you're tearing a car apart is extremely important. You save so much time in the long run when you actually start assembling the car. Now, so this is one difference that I made. So, there we go, now you can see it. Um, this isn't exactly where it's gonna go. This is the ECU. Uh, normally it would go down in the footwell, way down here. So, so I don't have to run all this weird bracketry and whatnot down there. Um, I'm just gonna try to run it up there because I should have plenty of room not having the airbag on the passenger side anymore. So that'll be nice uh, not having to worry about that in the footwell in case like that's ever crushed or something like that, like I run into a stump, um, all the electrics, important electrics and whatnot should be up higher. Um, not that I think that something could penetrate and like ruin the ECU, but could happen, who knows. Uh, it's nice to get that off the floor. Maybe it'll get wet or something too. Yeah, so like I said, that's all I'm doing tonight. So I'll let you guys go. Stop wasting your time. Uh, I gotta shower and get to bed and wake up in about six hours. So see you guys tomorrow with whatever the heck I'm gonna do.